What's up, humans, and welcome to a new Psychoactivo. This is a late one, I know, but we got some uh, confirmation of the news I came up with on Monday about the James Webb Telescope. So the gist of it was that James Webb confirmed a couple of things. One from the SETI at home uh, signal that was discovered in the early 2000s. Those were just lights. They're not city lights. They're not from any specific planet, as far as I know. People have been speculating that it, it is either Zeta Reticuli or Proxima B, but uh, none of that has been confirmed. Just that there were some lights that were spotted from that uh, frequency that was found, modulation, as... Um, Simon Holland said. The other thing was that uh, they're saying that another confirmation is that the James Webb had is being briefed in Congress to people in Congress in unclassified settings. That's what I was told. I decided to go uh, to Matt Laszlo from Askapol and tell him to ask co Congress people about this. He asked them about classified uh, briefings. He asked uh, Senator Gillibrand. She said, nope. But then she asked Rep um, Representative Carson. And that was interesting to say the least because he didn't say no. He didn't say yes either. Let me show you what he said. Matt Laszlo has already three interviews on my channel, and he's like boots on the ground reporting and asking your questions to Congress, and specifically about UAP. And what he asked last, uh, uh, what he asked Andrew Carson here is very, very interesting. So let me play it for you. And if you haven't yet, please consider a paid subscription to help this scrappy startup continue changing Washington one interview at a time. And now, here's our latest Ask a Poll exclusive from your U.S. Capitol. Did you hear? Oh, oversight. Yeah. Interesting. What do you make of that? Listen, the public wants no one here, but... Have you ever party without us? Heavy affair. Hey, have you ever been in classified briefings on the James Webb Space Telescope? No comment, my good brother. No comment? Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to Ask a Poll. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, as you guys may have already realized, Carson has been part of some uh, briefings in Congress already where they talk about UAP. And he's been one of the few during the first briefings that took place. More than 50 years ago, the U.S. government ended Project Blue Book, an effort to catalog and understand sightings of objects in the air that could not otherwise be explained. For more than 20 years, that project had treated unidentified anomalies in our airspace as a national security threat to be monitored and investigated. In 2017, we learned for the first time that the Department of Defense had quietly restarted a similar organization tracking what we now call unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAPs. Last year, Congress re rewrote the charter for that organization, now called the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group or AIM SOG. For short, today we will bring that organization out of the shadows. This hearing and oversight work has a simple idea at its core. Unidentified aerial phenomena are a potential national security threat, and they need to be treated that way. For too long, the stigma associated with UAPs has gotten in the way of good intelligence analysis, Pilots avoided reporting or were laughed at when they did. DOD officials relegated the issue to the back room or swept it under the rug entirely, fearful of a skeptical national security community. 
Today, we know better. UAPs are unexplained, it's true, but they are real. They need to be investigated, and many threats they pose need to be mitigated. Under Secretary Moultrie, Mr. Bray, uh, thank you for coming today. Um, first, we need you to update us on the status of AIMSOC. Uh, the legislation creating it was passed in December. The deadline for implementation is fast approaching, but the group does not even have a named director. We need to know, sirs, the status of the organization and the obstacle to getting it up and running. Secondly, you have to convince the audience today, and most especially our military and civilian aviators, the culture has changed. That those who report UAPs will be treated as witnesses, not as kooks. Thirdly, you need to show us, Congress, and the American public whose imaginations you have captured. You are willing to follow the facts where they lead. You know, we fear sometimes that the DOD is focused more on emphasizing what it can explain, not investigating what it can. I'm looking for you to assure us today that all conclusions are on the table. One final note, we are mindful today that AIMSOG is not starting from scratch. This is the third version of this task force in DOD and civil society groups like the Mutual UFO Network, uh, Mr. Corbell and others have been collecting data on this issue for years. I hope you'll explain how you can leverage the knowledge and experience of our prior work on this matter to move the AIMSOC along. The last time Congress had a hearing on UAPs was half a century ago. I hope that it does not take 50 more years for Congress to hold another because transparency is desperately needed. Who is actually asking serious questions. And I think that's not no coincidence. So we already have one name of a potential person who has been briefed about this. But the other confirmation that I got, which already made, makes me confident that this is actually happening, is that a number of people from this uh, control disclosure group, I'm not going to name any names. I'm just going to say that they confirmed that the information is correct, but some of them are even bragging about it. And I think that's pretty unbecoming because they know something within their little group and they're using uh, information as currency, sensitive, important information that the people need to know. And they're bragging about it online, saying that they already knew about this, just bragging, you know? And I think that's, um, well, I'll let you decide. What do you think about that? That they're bragging about it and they're not telling the people. I don't know. Uh, it's just, uh, it doesn't sit well with me. If you, if I'm being completely transparent with you, I think that they know about this. They're not telling someone because of a specific reason. I'm still trying to find out why they're not telling people. But I already know that there's a lot of disinformation and a lot of the information that is coming out uh, from the disclosure group, the control disclosure group, that is uh, either under NDAs because it is already planned to be disseminated in a specific way, or uh, it's, um, it's part of rights to material, you know, like Hollywood stuff. And it's not being talked about because it is being saved for either a documentary or a news piece or, you know, the same old exclusivity bullshit that has become like a norm over the last decade in these topics. And I know the specific group of people that have rights to a lot of this stuff and have attempted to get their hands on everything they can so they can profit from it. And I don't know, uh, if you ask me, this type of um, behavior has no place uh, in the UFO topic or within the UFO community. We saw that it happened with Jason Sands, just to give you an example. Sands 
came out. Uh, it was confirmed that he was part of the James Fox documentary, uh, the program. And then he was on an interview with uh, Digby and Tom from the Unidentified Anomalous podcast. And he was on camera and he was asked by presumably people from the production team at the program. I don't know if it was Mr. Fox. I guess that Mr. Fox has no control over many aspects of his productions because he's not the only owner of his productions. Uh, so Digby and Tom were told to take the video down because um, apparently there's some kind of a contract that doesn't allow Mr. Sands to be on camera talking about anything before the program comes out. And this is prevalent within the UFO community in this group that act a certain way because they have privileged information. But let me tell you guys something. You are fighting for this to become more mainstream and it's working. We got Lou Elizondo on the Daily Show. He was just on a People magazine article talking about this. One of the biggest publications in the world. It's working. Something that you guys are not realizing is that the way this has worked before this became more mainstream is that you have your little group and anybody who starts making content or doing journalism on it, you guys approach this person and tell them to, if you want to be part of this, you got to toe the line. You got to, you can't say this. You can't say that. There's a timeline for saying this or saying that. That is going to end guys eventually, because this is becoming so mainstream that People from other spheres of information are already getting on this. And many of them have way more power than you do. <laughs> so there will come a time when you're not going to be the ones asking us to play ball with you. It is going to be the other way around. You're going to be the ones who are going to have to play ball with us. And by us, I mean the rest of people who are eager to find this out about this information and you guys are keeping it for yourselves until at your best or earliest convenience and this needs to end so i guess you'll find out soon enough because if this information somehow leaked think about this how did it leak why is such a small podcast like mine talking about this with leaked information from your group. Why is it? Because people within your own group doesn't like this anymore. They don't want to play that game anymore. And the fact that you guys are signing NDAs with production companies to stay quiet about uh, stuff that they get rights on should stop too. It's not fair. This is not Hollywood. This is real life, real sensitive information. And you keeping it for your convenience without telling the people is going to have to stop. And if you guys don't want to take the first step, there are going to be way more leaks and you're not going to have control over it. That's just what is going to happen. And I'm just one of the first who is doing this. But there are going to be more like me who are going to get some leaked information and is going to come out. And you're not going to like it because you're not playing ball with us. So tough shit. That's all I got to say for now in terms of this. But another update from my sources uh, who are astronomers. Uh, one of them is in Europe, are telling me that uh, James Webb uh, has been pointing at a certain uh, angle consistently for a while now. And this astronomer is uh, currently checking on some data that he found really unsettling because based on some information I gave him so he could look and start trying to get some telescope data, he found out that there is some missing data. I don't know exactly what that means now, 
but I will find out soon enough. And I have a feeling that when I find that out, either you guys, the ones that are keeping this from, from us, just come clean already, or shit's going to keep leaking. So I guess the ball's on your court now. I hope you guys realize that it, it just needs to stop. I can't be the one divulging this information. And especially because it's incomplete. You guys have the complete information. You should be telling the public. So please do. That's all I got for now. If you like the content you see, like, share, comment, subscribe, the usual, you know. If you want to support the channel in any other way, uh, you can uh, check out the links I left in the description. There are some donation links and you can get yourself something. You can get something for the podcast. But yeah, let me know what you think about this new development. Laszlo told me that he's going to start asking the question to more people in Congress. And I suspect we're going to get more revealing answers before these people come clean with what they know. If you guys want to play the game, that game, be my guest. Let's play. Without further ado, I'll see you guys until... Monday's video. Bye.